Mm, I think we're going to keep this. I mean, we have red and green. We need white to play that turn three Soktar, but I'm going to risk it. So we open with the Gruel Guild Gate. If we get white mana, we're so good. Well, I guess stock targets a wee bit less exciting now, but that's okay. At least our opponent has to, I guess, keep up a white mana. <laughs> Not that that's terribly difficult, but... Well, I, we have the Arachnus Web, too, actually. That's, that's something. Ooh, Nighthawk. That card's great. Um, I may actually just want to web the Nighthawk. Yeah, I think I do. That way, if I draw another white mana... No, I was going to say I'd find some way to use the Pit Trap, but that's probably not happening. So, since I used the web on the Nighthawk, I'm not going to be able to lock down the Lock Keeper, but... Nighthawk has to be stopped. No play. Alright, so we'll just play the Thoctar. Forbidden Alchemy. So, Agent of Masks, and then Deputy of Acquittals. So they didn't take Deputy of Acquittals? That's terrifying. What did they get? Because Deputy would have brought their Nighthawk right back, right? So there's our white mana. <laughs> hmm. So I think I play Gaia's Anthem. I basically really... God, there's no way my opponent's going to attack with God, Gideon's Lawkeeper ever, right? That's all right. I We still risk it. So I'm going to play the Anthem. And I'm going to leave up the uh, the pitfall trap. Even though the chances of my opponent attacking the lawkeeper are pretty slim. Okay, well now they've gotten a lot better. So what are we discarding? I guess the trumpeter? I want everything else, because courage can bring us back if we're in a bad spot, right? So, let's ditch the trumpeter. Alright, so we got exactly what we wanted, which is just great. So, I can go Signet into Thoktar, which is also very good. And I still have green, white, red. Okay. Okay, opponent DC'd for a little bit there, but they're back now, so we'll tap this land, and we'll get our green mana, and we'll play a Wooly Thoctar.
Okay, so that's put on the bottom. So this way, if we draw a land, we can play the spinner. Otherwise, we can play the splicer. Lockkeeper's not bad either, but we'll start it off with the splicer. Two cards in our opponent's hand. Hmm. Well, that's going to hurt us pretty bad. The Nighthawk's going to come back. The Horror's going to bounce our Golem. I mean, I guess the good news is we're not taking any damage, but bad news is we're... It's funny that the Golem comes back to my hand, but I can't discard it, I guess, because it's not an actual card. That makes sense. So I'm going to need the Law Keeper. Ugh, this is a bummer. Maybe I don't need the Law Keeper, because I'm probably going to need the Courage, though. Mm. Yep. If I can get a land, we're fine. Well, why did I say that? <laughs> One card left in my opponent's hand. So I can Courage the Splicer and attack. Because otherwise I'm just taking a bajillion damage. So I think it is actually what I'm going to do. I'm not particularly happy about it, but... I'm actually kind of surprised it took that, honestly. So now I'm trying to think, is it better to pull the Arachnus Web from my deck or the one from my graveyard? If I pull the one from my deck, I guess I'm more likely to draw a land. But if I'm also more likely to draw the other good spells in my deck. So I think we do actually pull it from our deck. Well, that's actually not that bad. So we'll play the spinner. And it's probably a good idea to sandbag the land for a blink effect on the Denrova Horror. So we'll do that. So we are going to deck then. I guess now we can attack with both though, which is even better. And I guess we can play a land now.
All right. So when does it fall off? The beginning of the end step. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we'll just pass. And at the beginning of their end step, we'll do the spinner on the horror. And the other web on the horror, rather. It's going to fall off, but we can get it back. It's going to fall off on our turn, right? Because in step, now we do this. Tap the spider. No. Do the web. Tended knight is good, so we'll attack. And we'll play an attended knight. And pass. So yes, the web falls off, but that's not a big deal. So we untap, draw. We can play a land, then we can pass. Mm, I guess I can attack with the Splicer, Knight, and Soldier. And then just Spinner the Horror, but it'll fall off at the end of... I don't think that matters, though, does it? They block my 4-4. Four, four. Maybe they block that and take 3. Hmm. I'm trying to think why it would be better to do it on my opponent's turn. It's not immediately coming to mind. I think I'm just going to attack. So we'll do our attacks, and we'll spinner this thing. Tap this. I mean, we're gaining life every turn, so we're in good shape on that front. Okay, Forbidden Alchemy, looking for some gasoline. I mean, I guess the reason to do it on my opponent's turn is I can attack with the, sp the spinner. So that probably does make sense, in hindsight. But that also potentially gives me one less attack, depending on what my opponent drew, right? So it's, I don't know, it probably is still better. Oh, they found something. They found something. I'm assuming it's going to be Blink. All right, we're just going to attack with the Splicer in the night here. Just gonna sandbag all the lands. Okay. Can't attack us. Discard a land. We 
We lose that. We tap. So we'll play a spinner. Play a call. And then we'll pass. Um, I guess I was... Well, if I attack with the Splicer, though, they probably trade. Not that that's even bad, is it? Well, probably isn't bad. It might have just been worth it. Okay, so they got some gas now. They got more gasoline. So I guess we'll still do it to the... This is really challenging. I think we're still doing it to the horror. They get to just unburial rights, though. Hmm. This is a challenge. Yeah. All right. So I can double block my spinner. So I guess we just attack with these two. Kind of wish I could do more. Not particularly happy about this, but yeah, that's a bummer, but I don't know what to tell you. Our opponent's just kind of outdrawing us now. I mean, they did play uh, the thing, the forbidden, so I guess it makes sense. Well, thank God for reach. The flood is real, my friends. Yeah, it's gonna, unfortunately, it's gonna end up costing us the game, I think. Mm. I mean, it's cool, it's just, I think it would have been good about 30 to 50,000 turns ago. It's a bummer. All right, well, wanted this game to go. It game looked good for about the first ten turns, and then the opponent just beat us with card advantage while we sat here drawing lands. Kind of a bummer. All right. Pretty disappointed, but that's all right. I 
I still like our deck a lot, by the way. And I think our deck can very, very easily win this match. But we're definitely going to have to draw hotter. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give reach anyway. Well, we were dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, yeah, that, that bummed me out a little bit. But that's all right. Sometimes bummers happen. So let's let's figure out what we're going to do here. So this takes out the Signet, which isn't a bad idea. Did we see anything else? I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything. This is going to be bad against horror too, right? Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's just straight worthless. I don't know. Seal for Signet doesn't strike me as good enough. All right, we'll just run it back. I'm not feeling great about this match anymore, though. I mean, we can win it, but I'm not feeling great about it anymore. If their late game plan is better than our... Although we did just draw like a bajillion lands, right? No, but they have better card advantage. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I don't know what to say. It's basically, it's just going to be a tough game. Sometimes games are tough. I mean, despite the game being tough, I still really like our deck a lot. That was a good draw. I still really like our deck a lot. Hmm. So do I want to hold off on the Hookmaster? Opponent can play a four drop next turn. I wish that Aether Toe put on the bottom. Okay. And the night resolves and we'll pass. So some Denrova horrors coming up here. Which means I think I just attack with the uh, everything but the, the law keeper here. Especially since I don't actually have a play. Hmm. That's interesting. So I guess we'll courage uh
Wait. Can I leave up a white mana? I guess I can't, right? Because if I tap a... I need... I don't need double green for courage, so... Okay. So we'll courage a knight. Might want to courage a soldier. No, we got to courage the knight. The reason is because of the sheer quantity of Denrova horrors in there, but they have Denrova horror, right? Hmm. All right. Encourage the knight. All right. So horror's not going to do it. They got to do something pretty spicy here. Mm, that's not going to do it either. All right. So it looks like we got there. Which is cool. So we got game two. Uh, can we get game three in the same fashion? That is the real question here. Anything different? Do I want the seal now? Like, I'm trying to think if there's something just, just bad. Like, Pitfall Trap does not seem great against our opponent. Maybe I just swap that. The Seal does buy us time. Their late game plan is very good. I wish... God, I wish Seal was so much better against my opponent. All right, we'll take out a Trap for a Seal. Um, okay. I mean, I guess if they play the Signet, I can blow it up. Hmm, that was a good draw. That was a really good draw. So you tap that, and then we play Fists of Ironwood on it. Okay. Mm, honestly, no, well, no, it's not even that good for him. It's okay. I guess, you know, the, the Cobra is actually pretty good for us, so I guess that is actually pretty decent. But, that's all right. So we'll get in with the Sapperling, play our Thoktar. I guess the problem is our opponent's rapidly getting towards that Denrova horror. So. Hmm. All right. Play the anthem here. So what are we discarding? I guess the seal of primordium off when our opponent plays the horror we'll discard the the seal. Which was uh, questionable at best anyway, right? 
So there's our fourth land. Now I can play the Hookmaster to get in for an additional four. I guess that makes sense. So we'll see if they have the second horror, which they very easily could. They have three in their deck after all. Okay. So now we'll discard. That's actually a weird choice. So we'll discard a Ether Toe. I mean, I guess I understand it because they can tap the, uh, hmm. Oh, if I had two red, I could, <laughs> that's okay. So we'll play the hook master, tap the horror again. We're just trying to nickel and dime our opponent down at this point. Oh, they forgot to tap. It was a mistake. I think they're, I think because they're losing on the clock a little bit, they're playing quick. That's what I suspect at least. Hmm, unflinching courage, but they have the tapper. So I think we just, at this point, well, I could actually play the trumpeter. I've got two blockers I gotta get by. All right, we'll just play the Thoctar. Make better use of mana. All right, our opponent decided to just concede, which is fine with me. So we ended up going 2-1 with our deck, which is very good. Uh, I liked the deck, even though I went for uh, a different plan, token-related. It ended up all coming together reasonably in a reasonably cool way, I thought. The spinner with double web is a lot of fun to play with. The Thoctars, we at least got to play them a few times. So it turned into sort of like a Naya beats value, weird hybrid sort of deck with a Gift of Orzova and an Unflinching Courage. So strange deck, but we've got a lot to learn from this format, and there's certainly a lot more to come. So thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We'll see you soon.